if you would turn with me to Acts chapter 15. We'll be in Acts chapter 15, verse 36. Uh, I'm reading from the ESV translation, but if you have your own Bible in another translation, that is awesome. The page will be 1,099. If you, if, you open, if you grab one of the Bibles in front of you, it'll be page 1,099. Starting in verse 36, it says, And after some days, Paul said to Barnabas, Let us return and visit the brothers in every city where we proclaimed the word of the Lord and see how they are. Now Barnabas wanted to take with them John, called Mark, but Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. And there arose a sharp disagreement so that they separated from each other. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus. But Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord. And he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. Paul came also to Derb and to Lystra. A disciple was there named Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, but his father was a Greek. He was well spoken of by the brothers at Lystra and Iconium. Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, and he took him and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. As they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So the churches were strengthened in the faith, and they increased in numbers daily. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you that all of this is documented so we can see how the gospel spread from the apostles in Jerusalem to the rest of the world. And Father, we pray that you would open our eyes to the text here and to your word that we can can draw from it application for today and understand better what what was happening in Acts, that we can be motivated and inspired in the mission of Christ to reach the world, that they may hear the gospel and come to faith and be saved. Father, we love you. We thank you for this time we have to draw, draw together and read into your word. Help us not to take it for granted. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we're going to be talking about division for multiplication. Division for multiplication. So starting back in verse 36, Paul said to Barnabas, let's go back. Let's go all the way back. We're going to backtrack through where we've been and see how the churches are doing. Now Barnabas wanted to take with them John called Mark. This is the same guy who wrote the book of Mark. Uh, If you didn't know, we believe that Mark got all of his uh, writings after hearing Peter's sermons over and over again in Jerusalem. And he put that together. So this is the same guy who wrote that gospel. And he was also a cousin of Barnabas. So Barnabas wanted to bring him along, but Paul thought best not to take with them one who had withdrawn from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. We don't know why. Mark left him. It was when they were doing this missionary journey, but he had, he had left and had gone back to Jerusalem, and, and Barnabas was wanting to bring him on this trip again. And it says there arose a sharp disagreement. They were, Paul was really adamant about this. Barnabas, known as the encourager, was saying, no, it doesn't matter that he, he went back. Let's, let's take him with him. Let's take him with us. Let's go. But Paul said no. And, and it was to the point so that they, that they separated from each other. They chose to go their different ways. We don't know how that happened. All we have in here is that there was a sharp disagreement. So we don't know if they, if they said, okay, let's, to deal with this, let's go separate ways. We don't have that. We just know that it was a, a sharp disagreement. So we're not going to try to, I'm not going to try to add in anything into Scripture that's not there. I'm not going to try to color this situation in any way. We do know that later on in the, 
in the letters that Paul wrote to the churches, he, he speaks highly of Mark. And so they decided to separate and go different ways. Barnabas took Mark with him and sailed away to Cyprus, but Paul chose Silas and departed, having been commended by the brothers to the grace of the Lord, and he went through Syria and Cilicia, strengthening the churches. So they both said, we're going to split up, we're going to go tackle this and go different ways. So one of the things here to note is that differences are okay. There is a church right next door. There's another, there's another church. We're different from them. They, they are Presbyterian. We, we choose to be Baptist. And differences are okay. It is okay that we have differences. Even in Baptist circles, there will be differences. Many Baptists, if you've been, if you've been in church long enough, you probably have experienced a church split. And it's a very painful thing. And so while differences are okay, how we handle differences matter. We may come to a, a disagreement on the methods that we use. We may come to a disagreement on our interpretation of Scripture. Differences are okay, but how we handle those disagreements is very, very important. Sometimes we'll get very, very emotionally involved in some of our disagreements. But Ephesians 4, 26 through 27, it says, Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger and give no opportunity to the devil. If you've ever been in a meeting at church, it could have been something for the uh, what color we're going to paint the building, or it could be something for um, what, what we're going to do with the, the finances. Sometimes there can be some anger. And some really, really people, people who are just bought into what they believe God wants them to do. And we can have those disagreements. But Jesus speaks in John 17 to the unity of the church. And how important it is that we love one another and care for one another. And so while we may be angry, it's important that we do not sin. Don't let the, it says, do not let the sun go down on your anger. That means... That you don't want to do, and you don't want to do anything out of that that is going to have permanent, permanent consequences. I've, I've witnessed people get angry in church circles, and then they still don't talk to people from that that event. And it happens all the time. It happens in churches everywhere. It's a thing, but we don't want to give opportunity to the devil to divide us. We can have differences. It's okay. The thing to note is that even though Paul and Barnabas separated and they went two different ways, they both understood that we have the same mission. We have the same mission. We have a mission to multiply and make disciples. We're not in competition with other churches. Isn't that weird? We're not in competition with other churches. We can, we can share what God is doing. We want to encourage them. I think it's really great that we can, we can meet with other churches. I had an opportunity to meet with a bunch of churches, a bunch of leaders in churches who were not in our denomination. And we got together and we talked and we prayed and we ate together. And it was so encouraging because we weren't talking about theological differences, but we were talking about how wonderful Jesus is and what God is doing in the ministry to reach other people. We're not, in, we're not in competition with the Presbyterian Church. We're not in competition with Fairview Loop. We're not in competition with Farm Loop. We're not in competition with First Baptist Palmer. We want to work together because we have the same mission. So if we reach someone in the name of Jesus Christ with the gospel and they come to faith in Jesus Christ and then they go and they, they fellowship with another church, we give glory to Christ because that believer is plugged in and is is being fed the word, and is being raised up to understand Christ's commands. So even though that they had their differences and they wanted to handle things differently, they were still serving the same mission. So to, Paul and Silas head out, and they Paul, it says Paul comes to, if we look at chapter 16, verse 1, Paul came also to Derb and to Lystra, and a, a disciple was there, named Timothy. Timothy, the son of a Jewish woman who was a believer, 
but his father was a Greek. Now, no, we, we'll hear more. And when you, if you look in uh, the letters to Timothy, it talks about his mother and his grandmother. But his father, the way that the Greek says here, his, his father was a Greek. It actually means that his father was deceased. And it says in verse 2, he was well spoken of by the brothers of, at Lystra and Iconium. Well, that's very important that, that that one sentence is in there, that he was well spoken of. And what that means in the, in the way that the verbs in the Greek are used is that means it was repeatedly, it was continually going on that people were saying great things of Timothy. And as Paul writes to Timothy and Titus, when you're looking for leaders in the church, you want to look for people who are well spoken of, that people that uh, no one can say evil things about in, in both the believe, among the believers and of the non-believers. So it says that Timothy was well spoken of, and Paul kept hearing of how Timothy was well spoken of and what they would say about Timothy. And so he saw in him the potential for being a church leader. And so Paul wanted Timothy to accompany him, to go along with him on this journey, that he could raise up Timothy as a leader in the church. And it says something, if you look back into what we read about last week, it says something quite controversial, and you may go, why is this in here? It says that Paul, who was just talking against circumcision for salvation, took Timothy and circumcised him because of the Jews who were in those places, for they all knew that his father was a Greek. So we just talked about him. He was actually going back through the churches and telling people, hey, you do not have to be circumcised to be saved. But then he meets Timothy and he takes him and he, he has him circumcised. What's, what's up with that? Regarding salvation, circumcision was a source of division in the church and it is not required for salvation. But in ministering to the Jews, it aided the mission. Because they knew that Timothy was a Greek. It was spoke more to the Jewish people at the synagogues that were all throughout these cities that they were traveling to. He could speak more to them if he was circumcised. Because it showed that he was, he was one of them. And so Paul writes that I have become all things to all people so that some may be saved. And this is the, this is the same type of type of thought here that he's with Timothy. Our goal is to minister to these people. We don't want to reap division. We want to, we want to uh, sow unity among the brothers. And so to be able to minister to the Jewish people, and Timothy went along with this. He chose to go along with this. He chose to be circumcised so that he could minister to the Jewish people. So it was not for salvation, but it was for unity and for ministry. And it says, as they went on their way through the cities, they delivered to them for observance the decisions that had been reached by the apostles and elders who were in Jerusalem. So they continued after that. They continued to go into the synagogues. They continued to go and find the other churches in the, in the cities and tell them, hey, this is what we believe, that, that you are saved only by Christ in faith in Christ by the grace of Christ. And it's not through all of the religion. It's not through all of the laws, but in Christ alone. So they continued on in that. And it says in verse 5, So the churches were strengthened in the faith, and they increased in numbers daily. That was the point. The whole point of it was so that the churches were strengthened in the faith, and they increased in numbers daily. That's hard. might be hard for us to kind of understand and to picture that they were increasing in numbers daily, not just a weekly thing, not just a monthly thing, not just getting one here and there. They were actively sharing the gospel and preaching the good news and seeing people join them every single day. We have the same mission. We have the same mission. So as we operate as a church, we're going to have differences. We're going to have differences on what the church looks like. 
We're going to have differences on what the Constitution and bylaws say. We'll have differences over the methods we use to, to share the gospel. We'll have differences over the translation of the Bible we use. We'll have differences over how people should dress when they come to church. We'll have differences over... Um, how we teach Sunday school and how we do Bible studies. We'll have differences in children's ministry and nursery. All of these differences are okay. But it's really important to remember how we go about those disagreements. To continue loving one another. To continue in the mission. So Paul and Barnabas went separate ways Barnabas wanted to take with him Mark. He wanted to take with him Mark. He wanted to continue to encourage Mark in the ministry. And so he, he did, and they went on their way. And then Paul found Timothy. He was a younger man, and Paul chose to take him with him and raise him up in the ministry If our, if our goal is to make disciples, in accordance to Matthew 28, the Great Commission to make disciples in all the world, teaching them Christ's commands and baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, who is accompanying you in ministry? Who is accompanying you in ministry? Who are you taking along and going out and raising up to do these things. I think a lot of times we think that we're flying solo. Man, I need to go share, share, my gospel, the, share the gospel with my neighbors. And, and, you know, I'm so scared to go do that. Take someone with you. It could be a, a younger person in your family. It could be another person in the church. It doesn't matter their age. But who are you raising up in the ministry? See, God used this disagreement between Paul and Barnabas. He used this disagreement for the good of the church. Churches divide in two different ways. They divide over disagreements, and they also divide when we send people to church plant and to plant another church. If I were to go out and to make a disciple, and I started gathering with them and teaching them the Bible. And then we went out together and found one more and did the same thing, raised them up, teaching them Christ's commands and baptizing them. And then the three of us were to go out and to find one more and to teach him. And then the four of us were to go out. We're only adding one at a time. But if I were to raise up someone and take someone with me and teach them, to teach others, and then send them out. And the two of us go out and each find one. And we teach them, and then the four of us each go out and find one. We start to see multiplication. We start to see multiplication. See, if we rely on just one thing, if we rely on just the activities of our church to, to find people, if we rely on just the, the pastor or just the deacons to minister then we're only using one source of the gospel. But if we all go out, and we're all reaching, and we take somebody with us, and we train them up, we can see multiplication in the church. And we can see actions like in verse 5, the church being strengthened in the faith and increasing in numbers daily. So how we handle difference is important. We have to understand, and the foundation to getting through differences is understanding the mission, having our eyes focused on Jesus Christ, because he's what binds us together. He's what binds us together. And we need to remember to raise up other people. That was, it's a huge deal that, Timothy, that we see where Paul picked up Timothy and took him with him to raise him up. And we can read more into Timothy's ministry in the letters that he went in as Paul is continuing to encourage him while he's awaiting his execution. Who is accompanying you in ministry? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we love you. We thank you for the day that you've given us. And Father, we pray that 
we would not waste a day serving ourselves, but that we would serve you. Father, we pray that our faith wouldn't just be a part of our lives, but that our faith would encompass our life, that everything that we do, whether we eat or we drink or we go to work or we take the kids to school, that it would all be for your glory and for your kingdom. Father, we pray that we would be so inspired by the works of Christ, who while we were still sinners, died for us. That we would be inspired by his ministry, his life, that we would be inspired by the sacrifice he made for us in, in his death, paying for our sins. That we would be inspired by the resurrection, that we have everlasting life in Christ so that we may go out into the world and proclaim what Christ has done for us. We pray that our joy would not only be expressed in the music we sing, but in all of our actions, so that you may be glorified, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, if there's anyone here who does not have saving faith in Christ, Father, we pray that you would give them the boldness to ask questions and to talk to anyone here among us, please share with me how I can have faith in Christ. Father, we also pray that as you continue to build your church here in Wasilla, that you would utilize your, your children, the children of many different congregations for your kingdom. Father, we pray that you would continue to build unity among our fellowship, and also among all of the, the churches here as a whole, because all of these churches belong to you. Father, we pray that we would keep our eyes fixed on Christ and everything, knowing that you are sovereign and that you are with us always until the very end of the age. And Father, I pray the harvest is plentiful and the workers are few, so we ask you to raise up workers for the harvest. That we would have people who are willing to step up and step out into their community for the sake of Christ. Father, please pull us from cultural Christianity to radical Christianity for you. Living as Christ did, humbly, in self-sacrifice for your kingdom and for the sake of others coming to salvation in his name. Father, we love you. We thank you for all of the grace you give us every day. We thank you for being faithful to us in our faithlessness. May you receive all honor and glory and praise in the name of Jesus Christ. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Hebrews 